Good morning, everyone. My name is Dilip Advani. I'm the Director for Product Marketing for the Air Magnet Mobility and AirCheck uh, product lines. And I'm here today to walk you through today's announcement. Assisting me today will be John Anderson, who's our Chief Product Planner for all of our wireless LAN tools. So again, I'll try to keep this as short and sweet as possible because I think everybody wants the marketing guy to go away so that we get to the product demo stuff. So I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to do a good job there. So recap of what we announced last year uh, during the wireless field day. We announced the industry's first uh, site survey tool for 8211 AC to be able to measure uh, real world measurements using 11 AC adapter. So again, this year things can only get better. So for, as you may have guessed, right, or you may have seen some social media buzz, our announcement is going to be around 11 AC, which according to us is, uh, is not an incremental technology standard, it's a transformational technology standard. So we'll get into more details about what our announcement is. I think most of you are quite familiar what what the analysts have to say about the technology in the next three to four years, 11AC will account for 75% of all the APs that are shipping. Lots of people are going to skip uh, 11N if they're still on the legacy ABG technology and move directly to 11AC. It has seen a faster ramp up as compared to 11N. And then uh, I think there was a new research that came out that by next year, 75% of all the mobile handsets will be 11AC capable. Next, what we did, so this is something interesting. So we went ahead and we did our own customer survey, right, to find out what everybody feels about 11AC. Where are they in the transition process or deployment process or whatever for 11AC? So I'm going to talk about some of the aha moments from that survey. So the first question, which is our typical question that I think everybody wants to ask is, when are you planning to deploy 11AC? So 6% of people told us that they've already deployed it, but then you had around another 15% who are in the middle of it, and 29% are between six months to a year away from it. So again, when you look at the rollout of 11AC, it's even higher than what the analysts have expected since the last couple of months. We asked the question, why are you planning to go to 11AC, right? So uh, we did ask, we did have some funny answers where somebody said, oh, we had some extra money in our budget, right? So that's why we went ahead with 11AC. But the main thing was there, everybody is looking for performance improvements, right? So, and this will tie back to what we have to announce today as to how we're gonna help the customers achieve the optimum or the maximum performance possible with the technology. We asked people what their biggest challenges were with 11AC. And the biggest challenge was not technical. It was all about making the business case, right? Where's the ROI? Uh, so we'll get into more details about that. And then the, the next biggest challenge for people was to get the true performance as compared to what's defined in the standard, right? I think it's great that everybody says you get gigabit speeds or whatever uh, from this new standard, but in terms of the end user experience, it's all about throughput. So people are facing the challenge in terms of how do they maximize the potential of the standard to get uh, the real world throughput promises that the new technology standard has to make. We asked people how they were planning to roll out new 11 AC APs. Would they just do a simple rip and replace? Would they do a gradual rollout? And then 62% of the people said they would go with a gradual rollout. So again, that means more hybrid networks, which will increase problems on the network. We asked people who had already deployed 11 AC, what complaints were they getting? And 50% of them said, I don't see any difference in performance. Like Fifty percent of them said, I don't see any difference in performance. And we believe that is due to they don't know what, how they can solve some of those challenges of the new standard to maximize the potential for 11AC. 
Just a question. Was this from the IT people or from their customers, the users? So this was a combination of IT people and also SIs involved with the deployment as well. It's a combination of both. We asked people what percentage of client devices are 11AC compliant, right? And almost 74% of the people said the client devices that they have running in the environment are not 11AC capable, right? So again, everybody's talking about how the APs are transitioning to 11AC. So everybody's making millions of dollars of investment in upgrading their infrastructure but somehow the client devices are following a different refresh cycle. So even though you deploy your 11AC AP and expect to get the best performance, your weakest link in that communication could be your client. So let's talk about some of the challenges that customers have with the introduction of any new technology, right? The first challenge that people have is how do you phase in new gear into an established wireless LAN, and then obviously get the true performance as compared to what's available on paper or as defined by the standard. The second challenge that people have is once the network's deployed, they want to troubleshoot things right the first time without costly rework, escalations, or downtime. So as new technologies are introduced, what are users typically tempted to do, right? Uh, the first temptation that people have is do a blind one-for-one -one replacement, right? They say they have their 11N network or ABG network or whatever, and they just said, wherever we have 11N access points, let's just blindly pull them down and then install 11AC access points. Or if they're doing a gradual rollout, right? If they just get a complaint, somebody saying the speeds are slow or they can't watch a video, they just throw an AP at the problem and say, let's install a new 11AC AP. So again, that is not going to work with the introduction of this new technology. Uh, because if the original network was deployed for 2.4 gigahertz, as we all know, 11AC is 5 gigahertz, so some of those deployment decisions may not work, right? Again, depending on the environment, depending on the requirements, one-for-one -one replacement may work. But the most important thing is somebody in that organization needs to define that migration strategy. Right? How should you migrate to this new 11AC standard? Obviously, throwing an AP at the problem later is not going to do any good because it's costly, it's time consuming, and obviously that may lead to more interference related problems as well. On the deployment side, right, gone are those days where you could just rely on the four bars on your phone or on your Windows laptop or even your MacBooks, right? So the only way of truly representing the user experience of an 802.11ac network is to measure the throughput of the network. So in terms of troubleshooting, once the network's deployed, when there are problems, users are typically tempted to use any troubleshooting tool that they have on hand. This could range from freeware apps. It could uh, also be the built-in capabilities uh, inside the access point uh, infrastructure as well. And they do that because they believe all troubleshooting tools have the same capabilities, right? But what they don't realize is when you're in the field, right, or when you are maintaining or managing mission-critical applications on your network, right, you just can't use any freeware app, right? Some freeware apps are, for, are used by people to get a chuckle out of what their neighbor's network names are, right? So, the other important thing to remember is that the only way of solving problems in the network is not to miss any traffic. So that is very critical. Uh, obviously, when the problem's not solved right the first time, it costs costly reworks, redesigns, and then obviously lower user satisfaction as well. Uh, some people rely on the AP infrastructure vendor to do their troubleshooting. The AP infrastructures do have good basic statistics that they provide within their application or within their um, infrastructure as such. Uh, but again, there are two main issues, right? Obviously, the AP is fixed on the ceiling, so it cannot travel to the location of the problem. And as you know, many problems occur at the edge and, not, and cannot be seen from the center. Or the other thing is the way uh, the APs may be scanning the network, right? If they're in the part-time mode, 
it's as good as opening your eyes for a few milliseconds and then going back to sleep, right? Or if you're putting it in the full-time monitoring mode, uh, you're taking the AP away from providing client data services. So again, uh, you're not taking advantage of the uh, investment that you've made in the AP infrastructure. So now let's talk about what we are introducing. So what do the Air Magnet tools offer? So we're gonna help the users optimize their migration or coexistence path to the new technology. We're gonna help users accurately deploy based on true end user experience, and then we're gonna provide fast and accurate troubleshooting for 11AC. So I think most of you are familiar with the Air Magnet tools that we have to offer, which is Air Magnet Planner, Survey Pro, as well as Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro. So uh, with the upcoming release, right, and I'll get into more dates about that, uh, Air Magnet Planner will now support 802.11ac. So now you'll be able to model and design your Wi-Fi networks for the 802.11ac standard. So you can figure out where to place your access points, how to configure them, and how many access points you need. Obviously, you can also define your migration strategy and make decisions between rip and replace versus the slow rollouts. On the Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro side, I think uh, many of you must be familiar with, uh, again, it's a Swiss Army knife to solve security problems, performance problems, connectivity problems, and compliance problems. But it also has this unique toolkit that we first introduced a couple of years ago with 11N. And I think, Keith, you brought this up last year as well, that what about expanding your existing toolkit to now include 11AC support? So that is what we have done. So with this toolkit, right, you can measure the expected performance even before rollouts. So you can say, if there's 11AC access point and if I have 20 clients connected to it, what's gonna be the expected performance? Or if my CEO is gonna to connect to this new 11AC access point, find out if things are gonna work well for him, right? So that's what we're gonna do with this release. And again, John will be giving everybody a demo on uh, this uh, functionality as we move along. This, uh, the next one is around accurate deployment. This is what we announced last year, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time there. This is with Survey Pro with its 11AC capabilities, where now using 11AC adapter, you can measure true end user experience. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time here. But again, if you go back to what the customers had to tell us, right, is it's gonna help you validate those hybrid networks that are gonna be very common uh, out there in the field. Now coming on to Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro. So we are announcing full three by three capture and analysis in the portable solution. So again, as uh, I think most of you mentioned this last year as well, and then I think the whole industry has been talking about uh, in terms of the importance of capturing three by three information. Yes, there are solutions out there that may be using a one by one adapter, or they may be relying on the AP infrastructure for three by three capture and analysis. But like I mentioned, those have their own limitations. With one by one, John will get into more details. There's stuff you're gonna miss, right? Or if you're relying on the AP infrastructure, you're fixed to the location, or you're putting it in that dedicated mode. So this will be the first three by three portable network analysis solution. And we'll get into the adapters and everything during John's uh, slide because I don't want to take his thunder away. Again, a quick reminder on the solutions that we have to offer. Uh, Fluke Networks, again, is the only vendor that offers solutions for the entire wireless lifecycle starts from the planning phase to deployment to troubleshooting and then 24 by seven monitoring. So again, if you need to have a successful Wi-Fi deployment and you want to guarantee that it's gonna work uh, without any issues, you need tools from Fluke Networks there. Again, working with a single vendor, again, does have its advantages. Again, you reduce the learning curve. There's consistent results. So for example, if you worked with one vendor, uh, to make your design deployment decisions if there are problems and you bring in another uh, vendor tool to troubleshoot it. Obviously, they may call things differently, they may measure things differently. So working with a single vendor, again, you have that consistent data collection as well. Product availability. So a Magnet Survey Planner, right? Uh, the version is gonna be 8.7, will be available end of this month. 
Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro, right, which is version 11 with the 3x3 support, will be available in the Q4 of 2014 timeframe. Obviously, existing customers who are in the gold support get a free upgrade. We will be launching a beta program for the 3x3 uh, support in Wi-Fi Analyzer. Uh, definitely want to get the entire group here on that beta program. It's also available to any user who's interested in participating. So they just need to contact us via our sales team, or you can then, or they can send an email to info at ermagna.com. Now that we've spoken about the wireless side, right? Obviously, you don't, uh, you cannot ignore your wired network, right? Obviously, your wired network needs to be ready to handle this tsunami of data traffic. And Fluke Networks, with its OptiView XG solution, can guarantee the readiness of your core network, right? Whether it's a gig or 10 gigs, uh, and then guarantee its readiness for this new 802.11ac standard as such.